All right, uh, in the next part of the lecture, we're going to talk about uh, the limit of a sequence. Um, so here is an example. Um, so the sequence whose terms are n over n plus 1 uh, approaches the number 1 as n becomes, well, getting larger and larger. So w w what does it mean in practice, right? So let, let me plot this, this sequence. So a of x is here, it's x over x plus, plus 1. Right, so if you look at the uh, line y equals one, oops, sorry, then then you will notice that you know uh, see these blue dots as you know as you move to the right along the x-axis, so they they become closer and closer to the line. Right? So this is how we can see it on the graph. At the same time, if you compute like I don't know um, terms of the sequence, so like a I don't know, let's say 100th term, it's going to be 0 0.0.99, so it is quite close to 1. But if you compute like a much bigger term, like then, you know, it's already closer to 1. And if you compute like, I don't know, and even terms that are even further away along the sequence, then uh, you will get a number that is, well, virtually is almost one. I mean, so it's like, uh, it's decimal place, well, decimal um, digits are 99999 and so on, so on. It, it differs from one in probably one, two, like in 12th digit or something like that. So, I mean, it's, my, my point being is that, you know, the Farther, you know, the, the further you you move along the x-axis, the closer the, these numbers become to to one, right? So, and this is what, what it means for the sequence to to converge to number one. Uh, well, you can compare this to the sequence style, say like minus one, one minus one, one, and so on. So, so the, this sequence, so the uh, terms of this sequence do not approach any particular number, right? So because they just alternate between negative one and one. So, if there there is no limit, then we say that the sequence diverges. And and here is a different example um, of how a sequence can diverge is when its uh, terms just, just grow unboundedly, right? So in, in this case, by the way, when we write, we say when we write, we write that the limit is infinite. Right? So, but when we uh, say whether the sequence converges or diverges, then um, we say that the sequence diverges also. So it, it is a bit tricky. So um, when the, the, the sequence alternates between well, different possible limits, so we say that it diverges, but we can't really say that it its limit, well, the limit of the, this sequence, sequence uh, we, we don't really write anything. So we just said, write that it doesn't exist. So, but if um, a sequence is unbounded and if its terms just get larger and larger and, um, well, eventually just tend to infinity, then we, we write that the sequence, that the, the, the limit is infinite, but we also say that the sequence diverges. Okay, um, so th this is what it looks graphically. Uh, okay, so and there is also the um, definition of a limit of a sequence. So a sequence has a certain limit L. Um, if for every positive epsilon, there is a corresponding integer n. Well, the, this n depends on epsilon. So strictly speaking, I should write n, uh, n of epsilon. So, I mean, you, you can think of the, this n as, as a game. So if you um, if you play it with me, it means that you give me a value of epsilon, and epsilon is just a very small number. So, but it is a specific very small number. So you, you give me, you, you tell me something like, Let's say epsilon is 0 0.01. And then if I manage to find, for that value of epsilon, if I manage to find um, n capital such that for all small n that are bigger than my n capital, this inequality holds, then I win this game, right? And if I can win the, this game for every value of epsilon, regardless of how small it is, then the sequence converges. All right, um, so that's the idea.
uh, now uh, here is uh, what it looks like graphically right so the epsilon here so the the uh, blue line is is l so well sugar speaking is y equals l all right so here l we have l plus epsilon here we have l minus epsilon so this distance is epsilon right so if you give me a value of epsilon so i don't know let, let's say for for example if say in in this case let's say if epsilon is 0 0.01 whatever right and if i um kind of figure out was able to to come up with some particular value of n so that after this so uh, on the right of the, this point on on the graph of the sequence so all members of the sequence uh they are now between these two orange lines so l plus epsilon and l minus epsilon then i, I win the game and then it means that the, the sequence converges. i mean if i can do this for every positive epsilon so that's how it works all right so let, let's go through some examples so um how do we show using the definition how do we show that the limit of one over n is zero right uh so in in this case my a n is one over n my l is um, zero right so you give me a value of epsilon right so you i mean it is just some some positive number what i want to to achieve what i hope to achieve is that well a n minus l absolute value should be uh less than or epsilon so now i'm going to replace it with the uh, the actual data right so an is one over n so uh, and l is zero so th this is one what, what i want to achieve well at the same time this happens if you don't leave uh, so n is positive right so n is you know bigger than or equal than one so this is really just one over n um yeah sorry it should be epsilon it should be less than epsilon and this happens if only if uh you know i can just turn it over uh, so the i can take the reciprocal of an inequality so by switching the sign re reversing the, the sign so this this happens if only if n is bigger than one over epsilon all right so notice that if now um If my big N of epsilon is any integer that is bigger than or equal than one over epsilon, then if N is bigger than N and N is in turn bigger than one over epsilon, then in that case, automatically, you know, one over N minus zero is going to be less than epsilon. So then I, I will win the game. Right, so what I need is just for a given value of epsilon, I just need to to find n of epsilon that is going to be one hundred percent guaranteed is going to be bigger than one over epsilon. So it should be bigger than one over epsilon. So for example, what I can do, I can take the ceiling function. I mean that's the easiest thing to do. So the ceiling function is the smallest integer that is still bigger than or equal than the given uh, given real number. Like for example. The ceiling function of 17.35 is going to be 18. Okay, and in, the, in that case, my n of epsilon is automatically bigger than 1 over epsilon, bigger than or equal to, and then everything is satisfied. Right, so basically that that that's it. So this is how we can show that the limit of this expression is bigger than uh, sorry, is is zero. So let us look at some some other example, right? So in, in this case, a n is is what is n over n plus one, and l is one, right? So now again, so you give me a value of epsilon, and what I do, I should find n such that the following um, inequality is true right so if n is bigger than n of epsilon that i came up with then i should um 
then the, the following inequality should be satisfied, right? So it should be a n, so which is one n over n plus one minus one. It should be less than epsilon. All right, so let me simplify the, this inequality. So the, this happens if and only if. Um, this is n minus n plus one over n plus one less than epsilon. This happens if and only if. And then it cancels out, so this is minus 1 over n plus 1. Should be less than epsilon. Now n plus 1 is positive, so this happens if only if uh, 1 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon. Right, so what I can do is, I guess I can just uh, flip it over. So this is n plus 1 is bigger than 1 over epsilon. So this happens if and if n is bigger than basically 1 over epsilon minus 1. All right, so what I can do as my um, n of epsilon, I can take anything that is bigger than or equal than 1 over epsilon minus 1. It'll work. So how you choose it, that doesn't really matter. So, I mean, of course, the easiest uh, thing to do is probably to, to just try that n of epsilon is ceiling function of 1 over epsilon uh, minus 1. But notice that anything that, that is bigger than that will also work. So, for example, if you can remove minus 1 here, and it, 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 it'll work too, right? So, you can add 3, or you can add 37, or you can, I don't know, multiply it by 2. It's still going to work. All right, so in particular, um, so here in the typed um, proposed solution, so what they use is, in fact, 1 over epsilon instead of 1 over, over epsilon minus 1. So again, as long as, is, uh, as you know, it is bigger than um, 1 over epsilon minus 1, it will work. All right, so here is um, yet another example. So if we take consecutive powers of something that is between 0 and 1. So notice that uh, if r is 0 here, then we just have a sequence all whose elements are zeros. So, and of course, it, it just it is just constant. So, of course, it converges to 0. So, it's just, it, it's not really an interesting example. So, which is why r is assumed to be between 0 and 1. But notice that here, the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1. So, r itself could be positive or negative, right? And if we take consecutive powers, I mean, of course, it's, it's very reasonable to expect that if you multiply by um, a number that is smaller than one, so then every time you multiply, your number gets smaller and smaller, right? So the, the limit is zero. So how can we check it um, rigorously? So by definition, right? So again, so we are given an epsilon, right? And what we want is absolute value of of what of r to the n minus zero is less than epsilon. All right, so minus zero, I can just really remove it. So, and nth power can be taken out of the absolute value sign. So it is absolute value of r raised to power n should be less than epsilon. Now we are interested in restriction on n. So r here is constant. So when you can think of, of the, this, as solving this inequality, but we are solving in for n rather than for r, right? So how do we do that? So r is now in the exponent. So in order to, to really do something with it, we, we should apply the logarithm, right? So ln of absolute value of r raised to the power n is less than or equal than ln of epsilon. So notice that this is a valid operation because logarithm is an increasing function. So you can apply a long to both sides of an inequality and you will get an equivalent inequality. All right, so now the equivalent is still, so I'm doing an equivalent inequality. So still long of, um, you know, when we take a long of something that is raised to a power, then we can just take it out. So this is n times ln of absolute value of r is less than or equal than ln of epsilon. 
And now we are going to use this assumption. So that absolute value of R is between zero and one, right? So since it is bigger than zero, I mean, of course, absolute value of R cannot be negative, but you know, if it were exactly zero, then a loan of R would not be defined, right? So this side of the inequality just tells us that, you know, it is, um, it is a valid operation. So taking the loan of this is, is really a valid operation, right? So, uh, and now we are probably more interested in this side because a loan of a number that is smaller than one is just uh, negative. So the number itself is positive, but its logarithm is negative, which means that if we divide by a loan R, we're dividing by a negative number, so we should switch the sign, the sign of the inequality. All right, so now we are going to divide by long absolute value of r and since we're dividing by a negative number we should switch the sign we should reverse this sign so n is bigger than long epsilon divided by long at the same time notice that the right hand side is really a positive number because epsilon is a very very small so essentially epsilon is is also smaller than than, than one so because you know it should be a very small number and a loan of R is also negative. So it is negative over negative is a positive number. So this is essentially a positive number. But basically, if now N of epsilon is anything that is bigger than or equal than this, like, for example, the ceiling function of loan epsilon over loan of absolute value of R, then the inequality will be satisfied. Okay, so that's how we work with the definition of a limit. And um, some some other kind of easy effects is that the, the limit um, of a constant sequence is, is of course going to be that constant, which by the way, it's not a bad exercise to, to prove it by definition. <laughs> I, I didn't do it, but you, you, you can try to do it and you can check whether your um, your solution is correct. Okay, um, now th there is a theorem that I am not going to prove. To be honest, it's not very hard to prove, but again, so if you're interested, so you just you just read the textbook. Um, so the limit is unique, right? So a sequence cannot converge to two different numbers at the same time, right? So basically, it, it means that if if you see that you know there are like two different numbers that your sequence converges to like negative one and one then it diverges that there is no limit okay so that's all for the second part